What's up and welcome back to the Kind of Funny Games cast. Of course, I am Tim Geddes and I am joined by the new What's your problem? Games. Other <laughs> smoke machine, go! <laughs> hey, you oh, worked yeah. a podcast to go! Junior. When do we give up? Never. I'm, I, this, this, this is like a 25% chance That's not true. that one of them doesn't work. And who cares if it doesn't work? Because then it's like, it's a me? bad omen. I thought you meant in like life overall. Every time that happens, another person goes, do I really need to be a kind of funny member? Yeah. Do I really need to support these hacks? They question. can't even get their smoke machine to work. I'm supposed to trust them when they say this fucking monkey movie's good? God, Greg and the goddamn monkey movie. What? How are you doing, Greg? I, I'm good. I really I, want somebody you, right here, Greg, just to sit off camera with the... Uh, with like a, a fucking bubble? vape. <laughs> oh, okay. <laughs> Bear, you can go ahead. Put it back to the shot of me and Andy, because this is the Andy and Greg podcast. What's up, brother? Andy, I'm knocked that off. I'm so, yeah, I'm so sorry. I'm so sorry about it. I'm so sorry. How long would you say you've been a Greg Miller fan? Um, Man, getting close to a decade now. Yeah. Yeah. You, Maybe a decade-ish. Yeah, yeah. Okay, Over okay, a decade, yeah. yeah. And then we've been friends, obviously, since you started working here. Mm -hmm. Some would say best friends. Mm -hmm. And you and I are always experimenting, right? We're looking to take our relationship to the next level. Fuck yeah. <laughs> oh, fuck. Yeah, Let's fucking this. roll right now. What is, what is this? Right. A young boy by the name of Max Scoville gave me something I think we both might enjoy. Oh. This is the Oxy Shred and Slime. This is a Ghostbusters energy drink that has <laughs> Slimer on it. And I thought, I hate energy drinks, but you love them. Uh, I you're love a, Slimer. You're, you're a connoisseur, but if they take my love of Slimer and Ghostbusters and your love of caffeine without actually getting caffeine, uh -huh. I said, what else, what's up? Well, let me tell you. I mean, we discovered several weeks ago that taurine makes you look younger. Taurine. That's what we just... That's the discovery? Yeah, that was the discovery. Mm. Oh, man, it's green. It's doing other stuff to your body, but... Bear, look at that. It's green. Well, the cu <laughs> cup is also real green. Where did you find green cups? <laughs> <laughs> There's so much green stuff in front of Greg right now. We like, had them. even sell those. We had them. I don't know. <laughs> They're so bright and pretty, though. Yeah. What, what, what flavor is it? Slime. Oh. Oh, Lord. Ooh. Energy drink. Nat test? It's natural Failed. flavors. There's no aspartame or ACE C K. Okay, but I need like a. This is Apple. It's clearly <laughs> proven metabolic and energy. Zero jitter, zero crash. It's vegan friendly and gluten free. I mean, I, they might not have. Oh, it's a cal calorie burner. Zero crash, brain it's power. A calorie burner. Mood Get enhancer. the fuck out of here. And the I'm sorry. The, the flavor guys. actually is slimer flavor. You guys want to taste what slimer Bottoms tastes up, like? You know what I'm you saying? Some slimer in your mouth. Frozen Empire right here. Mm hmm. Oh like man, it. that's doing like a lot of things. Gets oh, you on the back, Greg. He doesn't like the slime it gets either. Gets you on the back. Like I'm still gonna drink it, right? Because oh, yeah. here's the thing: I'm I would be a fool to stand up here and be like, I don't know what flavor that monster is, but I still drink it. You know what I mean? Yeah. You know monster what? Monster does have a very unique taste too. It grew on me. What are your thoughts on Monster Bless? I'm not a big monster guy. Yeah. Dude, I'm not a big energy drink guy. This smells fucking terrible. It tastes better than it smells. Are there, it smells really bad. Yeah, it's got a bad bouquet. This is going to sound like sacrilege, but like, the, is there a good tasting energy drink? Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Monster Energy Rise Pomegranate Blueberry. Yeah, it does <laughs> Do you sound believe that, Tim? <laughs> oh, Mountain Dew. Sorry, did I say Monster Energy? I mean, I mean Mountain Dew. Oh, do we the count? fact that he's that specific, yes, I believe him. <laughs> <laughs> I don't think that we would like it necessarily. Ma Mountain I mean, Mountain, I do love Mountain Dew. Well, Mountain Dew Rise is their... Mountain Dew Rise is a specific energy drink. That's their, like, Dew? hey, rise and grind. Sort of okay. Thing. I yeah. will say that is something I would try just because it has Mountain Dew in the title. Here's, the, here's what I got real sad about recently, Tim. After we, we went to go watch... Oh, I went to go watch Ghostbusters at the Regal. All the Mountain Dew Rises are gone. No longer oh, no. being sold there anymore. And it would up. always get me happy because I'd be like, this is the only place that sells like energy drinks. Like I don't have to just get a fountain drink. I can get the Mountain Dew Rise Blueberry. I forget what the actual flavor is, but that's the one blessing that I'd say like, everybody needs to try this once in their life. Everyone needs <laughs> okay. to try this. Good <laughs> this is the kind of funny games cast. Where each and every week we get together to talk about video games, energy drinks, and all the things that we love about them. Of course, if you love what we do, you should get the kind of funny membership. You get to watch the show ad free. Uh, you get to watch live as it's recorded, and you get a daily exclusive multimedia experience. Greg way. Sometimes it's Greg. Sometimes it's Roger talking about woodwork and how it changed his life. Um, but it's always going to be a great time. Was the 
the thing that Cool Greg worked on today was that part of Gregway. That was today's Gregway. Yeah. 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 Okay. Yeah, you guys yeah. are definitely going to want to check out today's Gregway, everyone. It's uh, I got him. There's a lot of stuff going on there. Um, but of course, if you can't support us that way, that's totally cool. You can get the games cast for free with ads on YouTube and podcast services around the globe. Uh, thank you to our Patreon producers, though: Carl Jacobs, Kieran Hovisapian, and Delaney Twining. You I do want to point the out. Very best. Thank you, Max Scoville. Our Patreon supporters are incredible. So mm-hmm. sorry for interrupting you there, Tim. But also, Blessing housed about 20 cans of gingerbread Mountain Dew. So good, though. <laughs> like, so good, that, though. That is... <laughs> and they're expired, apparently. I didn't know that until oh, later. No. Oh, I, bu- I probably bought them expired, Blessing. I think yeah. they may have been like a year extra expired by the time you got to No, them. they were two years extra expired. Oh, <laughs> yeah, perfect. It. it was like the, 20... What year are we in? 2024? I think it said 2022 on there. Gingerbread <laughs> Mountain Dew with an expired date is like <laughs> such just a Darwin test of like... <laughs> oh, yeah. they, they made those just to like weed people That's a out. gimmick. Yeah. yeah they're like, yeah. There's, we're going to trick people into, like whoever buys this gets a golden ticket somewhere because no one's gonna actually purchase this thing You're benny b good says andy stop still the fuck here <laughs> i made it <laughs> benny b good says andy stop drinking it no like it tastes okay it just smells really bad i'm shocked by how bad it smells the please, gingerbread or oh. no this this beverage please just take I was a say because the gingerbread smelled great take a whiff from that i mean let me tell you it definitely smells like a slimer energy drink i don't know what it. i hated andy <laughs> I don't like it. More, it's I more don't like it. Oh it's like God. a Mountain Dew. Tim, let me tell you what. I've yeah. been saying Those I don't have chill. enough energy for a while, so ah, this is going to be problem. interesting because I don't do energy drinks usual. I'm excited to see what happens I to me. Do. I don't do energy drinks. <laughs> <laughs> well, remember the one time we had the prime energy drink and the camera was not on Nick Scarpino, so for about two minutes straight, he was staring at his hands. I can feel it, honestly. <laughs> like I, like I, the camera's on Greg as he's talking to. I forget what guest we have with us on a kind of funny podcast, and I'm sitting next to Nick, and he's just staring at his hands. <laughs> he was really, really feeling it. Uh, Tim, I almost didn't come into work today because I got for the first time my first ever diarrhea. OLED product. You have wow. ascended, my friend. Let's go. But you've never had an OLED thing in your life, like well, like a TV or a monitor. We gotta stop the smoke. <laughs> <laughs> A TV or a monitor, nothing like that. I've, you know, I, I helped buy my dad an OLED TV back home, and I love that thing. And I'm like, one day I'll get an OLED TV. I just like never really ever committed to it, but I've been wanting an OLED monitor for quite some time. And I went from a 27 inch to a 32 inch. It's a uh, Dell, the new Dell Alienware. It, uh, it is fantastic looking. Holy shit! I mean, this give me some of the specs, Andy, because this thing ushering in a new era of all this. 4K, mm. 240 hertz. Mm. Uh, the, as soon as you pop it on, it's like HDR, Dolby Vision, all that shit's right on. It is a. I'm with it's blessing. Phenomenal. I'm walking out while they talk about this PC stuff. God, I hate everybody. So Where's it? Where's he actually going? Oh, blessing go PP. Greg, Greg, go. Who knows? It's fantastic. Yeah, it yeah. is like I, I, I immediately boot up Dragon's Dogma too. And it looks like a whole new game. The HDR is just like we're gonna make this shit sing right now. And I was telling you that after I just booted those up, I went back to designing stuff and looked. I kept thinking my other monitor was like fucked up, and like because yeah. I'm like, all right, well, I'm using OBS to see what's on my gaming screen, and this looks so much darker for some reason. And that's the problem, Andy. You might be broken now. Like I've been broken for years. Like yeah. I it. it it physically pains me to look at LCD screens, and I know that's a me problem, and that is just capitalism run amok. Right. But they got me. They got me so, so bad, but it's okay because it, it brings me a lot of joy. Like, I got my first OLED TV in 2016, and Greg, to this day, there's to not a time day. I don't turn it on and think about, God damn, it looks good. Mm. Every single time. Yeah. Here we are. The future. It's now, Andy. And I'm you're so welcome. Excited. Welcome. I'm very proud of you. It's yeah. been a long time coming because you've been waiting for that sweet spot of the 240 refresh rate with the 4K with a big enough screen, the 32 inches. Because like and not ultra been, wide. Yeah, no, just I didn't just want 21 by nine. I, I specifically wanted because it, it it's always funky whenever you're trying to stream and it might throw things off and things won't snap and no BS and all mm-hmm. that shit. I wanted just a 16.9. Uh, so now I'm just like, when I get back home, I'm gonna boot up. Horizon Forbidden West on PC. Oh I can't God. wait to Prepare get this yourself. Ghost of Tsushima on PC and see how that looks. I am so jazzed, man. Very excited for you. Mm-hmm. That is a sign of, of growing up. Thank you. Of maturation. Thank you. But will there hit a point, Andy, that we grew up so much that we don't want to play games anymore? Hmm. 
That's the topic of the show. It's a question that we actually get a lot is, will you ever stop playing video games? Has there ever been a point in your life that you've had a gaming lull? And Greg and I had a great conversation today on Games Daily, uh, kind of touching on this in different ways. Mainly he was talking about uh, the, the, the kids in his life. These children. And like the type of games they play and like what the path from, you know, playing Fortnite to playing Uncharted looks like in modern times i'm like is that kind of an expected thing of these kids that are playing these more platform games do we expect them to care about god of war or is that still going to be kind of more of a, a niche thing all of that and then i was like you know what it's been a couple years since we've we've had the conversation of where we came from with games but more importantly where we're going with games i feel like the last time we did this greg was at the original spare bedroom. i was gonna say yeah like, it seems long. like well, i remember when we used to do the patreon exclusive games casts that were like your gaming history and all that jazz. exactly so um th there's a there's a lot there but i feel like it's just a, a fun <laughs> interesting conversation is you know this group of gentlemen right here we've talked to each other about video games for many years at this point and i feel like we've grown a lot and our opinions on games have changed the way our relationships individually with games has changed for a multitude of reasons uh but bless i want to start with you do you think there will come a point that you will ever stop playing games and if so when no I don't know if I'll ever stop playing games permanently, but I could see myself slowing down a lot. Like I'm not, I, I think for me, you know, the amount of video games that I play is in a large part due to me working at kind of funny, right. And like wanting to keep up with everything and wanting to play everything and wanting to like review things. Right. And I feel like there is not the biggest obligation, but some sort of obligation there that like, I want to play all the big things at the very least so I can be part of the conversation and like, you know, touch everything. To, yeah, touch everything. Like, you know, have my ear to the ground of what are the games coming out? You know, what's the, what, what are my thoughts on them, right? Like that helps toward game of the year. That helps for updating the super calendar. Updating the super calendar, right? Or like even when it comes to talking about things on KFGD, like it's better, it's easier for me to understand what I'm talking about when it comes to like Dragon's Dogma 2, if I at least have touched Dragon's Dogma 2, right? Or like understand what a game is. And so that's a big part of what continues to like, drive me to play video games every single uh well not every single day but play video games consistently i don't know if i'm going to be doing that like 20 years from now right like depending on what my life is let's say if i'm if 10 to 15 years from now i'm not doing a job that i that is either games media or it is like i i am reviewing things if i am just like if i'm just doing a producer role or if i'm doing something else i don't know if i'm going to be playing as many games i could see that even like <coughs> ushering into me Maybe not playing games. I don't know. Like I, I have fun playing games currently, but I also have like the same thing of sometimes I prefer watching a TV show. Sometimes I prefer watching a movie. I could see myself being like, you know what? I'm gonna start reading, <laughs> and like that taking over that time. You know, I re it's really hard for me to predict. What, that. What's that big red dog up to? <laughs> <laughs> catch up with his adventures. Yeah. Like, like, legitimately, <laughs> like yesterday, I was like, man, I who's this R.L. Stein fella? <laughs> <laughs> who's Frog and Toad? <laughs> I, yesterday, I went on Amazon and I typed I typed up uh, Invincible Compendium. Because I've been Hell watching yeah, Invincible, and I've gotten, I've started to get to get to a, a, a frustrated point with the show where I'm like, these breaks are just too damn long. I'm just yeah. gonna read the shit. Um, and so I like, I stared at the Invincible Compendium for like a minute on Amazon. I think it's like forty bucks, fifty bucks, and I was like, I'll come back around to this. Like t today's not the day, but one day I think I'm gonna pick that up and start reading it. And Got I can it. see that maybe leading down. Yeah, like, I have the path. all the Ultimate Editions. I could just give them to you. They're hardcover. They're huge. They're great. Oh fuck yeah, yeah. So good. Invincible, Bring that in. by the way. God damn. I caught it's, up it's last good. night finally. Woo wee. I, it's like it's taking forever. Though. That was the plan. Yeah. That was the plan. And I like I boot up Prime TV and for some reason it was like halfway through episode four, right before the break. I guess that's just where it left off at. And I was like, I've already seen this, but let me just rewatch like the second half of episode four. <laughs> I was like, fuck man, this show is so good. And so good. and I'm so glad that I was not taken out of it that like I thought I was like I'm done with this show. I, I'm so mad that they release it this way. I'm like, okay, it's a pretty decent, pretty decent show. I also bought the Berserk uh, on on DVD. It's uh -huh. like the seven, 1997 reissue. Wow, anime. Uh, and yeah, I started I watching to ask that again. Like, you okay, bud? Like, you doing good? I'm just romanticizing my solitude. You know, mm. that was the coolest way to say that. That's yeah, a, it's always like some solitude. meme. It's always you know that meme where like the girl's like talking to the guy on the phone. Yeah, and it was like. Uh, Babe, what are you doing? It's like, oh, I'm just here romanticizing my, I forget the it's good. agonizing solitude or something like that. I will say there's somebody in chat. Uh, breed boy? Bread boy? Bread boy. Oh, bread boy. <laughs> breed boy. <laughs> 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 they say, what about Tekken? And that is the thing is like, I think I could see myself if I wasn't working on Kind of Funny, 
Tekken being the only game that I've played this year, right? Like I, sure. I when I played Final Fantasy VII Rebirth, part of that was just that I was reviewing it, right? So I pick it up and I fall in love with it, right? Like I get super into it, but I don't know if I would have picked it up in the first place if I didn't feel like I had any sort of obligation to. And I would extend that into something like even Persona or um, Bellatro or games that I'm checking out because I want to be in the know. I want to be talking about these things. I think and uh, uh, while working, I kind of, or if I wasn't working, I kind of funny. Tekken this year might have been the only game I've played so far. Wow, that surprises me. Yeah. Andy, what about you? Do you see an end in sight? No, no. Nah. I, I just, I, I'm the opposite of Bless, where I'm, I'm more aligned with Greg when it comes to, I'd rather just play a game than like, I need to, I need to watch that show and I really oh, want the monkey to. Punch the lizard. <laughs> um, but a lot of it comes down to like the single, ex single player experiences that I enjoy. And even when I'm not doing that, it's like, I haven't played. You know, I, I I like playing at least one match of Valorant a day now, and I'm just super into that game still. Um, I do want to say, Greg, I, I I hope you raise Ben right and don't allow him to get like you two brain rot, because I, I I really worry about the future generation kids who have just been brought up on YouTube. Cause my my nephew, all he wants to do is play Call of Duty, Fortnite, Minecraft, Roblox, any other thing that's not that. How old is he? 13. Oh, that kid's fucked. Yeah. <laughs> Sorry. Thought yeah. He's younger. Jack at 10, I'll give it to him. You know what I mean? This stems from the Games Daily conversation. You know, Poe's son, Jack, was in town with, with Poe for spring break last week. And so he streamed with us a bunch. We had a great time. And we were able to start him on Helldivers. Right. And the conversation on Games Daily was talking about, I take it for granted that Jack plays so much Fortnite and so much WWE. I'm like, oh, he's a gamer like us. And so when I was trying to teach him hell divers and certain specifics and buttons and stuff like that, that was there, so foreign. There are no analogs to other experiences. Yeah, exactly. Right? Yeah. And I was like, oh wow, we're like paving new paths in his brain, kind of thing that I hadn't thought about. And that was like, well, how do you get those kids over? And you know, on his stream on Friday where he played with us for like five hours, six hours, it was the you know, all right. So when you go back to Chicago, you gonna get your friends to play this? He's like, oh no. We're like, why not? He's like, they won't, they won't, they don't play these kind of games. And I'm like, but it's so just next to Fortnite. It's still just running around shooting things as a team, right? But it was just like too much of a game in in a way that like what I was saying today and the argument I was making is that like now, you know, thinking of Fortnite as a gateway and thinking of it in Minecraft and Roblox and yada, 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 it doesn't actually necessarily lead to it where gaming is more accepted than ever, but it's these specific games that are more accepted than ever rather than some 10 year old 13 year old wanting to go play Valorant wanting to learn what Final Fantasy is etc so look he, like my nephew grew up like you know he every time I'd visit he'd have like when he he and my nieces would spend the night at my parents house he'd wear like Spider-Man pajamas or whatever yeah, yeah. and like when the Spider-Man game was coming out I was like this kid's gonna fucking lose his shit I can't imagine like at the time nine or ten year old Andy having this Spider-Man right yeah yeah and he's like, oh, and I was so stoked to show it to him. He was like, oh, my cousin has it. Yeah, I've, I've played it. And I was like, and it's not like the coolest fucking thing in the world. What do you like? What? Fuck out of this what? House. Like, what? He's like, anyway, I'm just, you know, go back to Fortnite or Roblox. <laughs> I was like, oh, dude, that sucks, man. Like this. That sucks. Dude, like, <laughs> these, the, these large single player experiences would have been so transformative to me. And I think back to being a kid and experiencing Mega Man X and... Metal Gear Solid and these things that were just like, holy shit, this is what games can be. And I still played multiplayer games as well, but it wasn't, it, it, it reminds me of, um, you know, whenever you see these stupid topics from, you know, streamers and stuff that only ever play multiplayer games, they're like, oh, gaming's dead. Yeah. yeah gaming yeah. sucks this year. And it's we like, figure here are these 14 other games that you haven't played yet because you're stuck only being a Call of Duty Warzone content creator. You, you know? know, I think it was a Newsweek article I used to, Truck, truck out a lot and beat the headline to death with when I would talk about it was the idea of this uh, Fortnite is really, you know, their place to hang out and talk to each other, right? Yeah. It's, in, it's an AOL chat room. It's a phone call. It's a whatever. And it's that thought back to when we were growing up and it was, that, yeah, we had multiplayer games like Mortal Kombat, but like that was an event to get like a sleepover together and have eight kids there that all wanted to play this mm -hmm. game where, where it would be like if you were all by yourself playing on your Genesis, right? You played for a little bit and then you switched the other thing and the other thing and the other thing. So you were looking for new experiences. And now multiplayer and that party atmosphere and grouping up with your friends is so simple to do. Like, yeah, you know, I remember watching 
the commercials because I never actually went and saw it, but the commercials for Dick Tracy, the movie back in the day, oh. and that watch he had, I thought was the coolest thing. And I was like, oh, if only I could instantaneously talk to Mike and Eric and send them messages without like a phone call, right? You know, no, we well, all see, have who's that Dick one. Tracy. Um, Dick Tracy didn't he have a sitcom? That's him. Yeah. Yeah. No, Dick Tracy was a, he's a <laughs> it's a comic strip about a detective who wears a <laughs> yellow got, jacket and yellow hat. He got adapted as a Warren sitcom. Beatty. He, 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 he played Dick Tracy in the movie. <laughs> What's the sitcom he's in? Dick Van Dyke? There he is. That's what I'm thinking. <laughs> okay. okay. So, I was like, there's a Dick sitcom. I've yeah, yeah, yeah. seen a it. Dick sitcom. I know there's a Dick sitcom. <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah, anyway, I just, I was kind of blown away by that. And I don't think that he will change that feeling anytime soon. Very similar to what you're mentioning with Jack. You know, like I, he and I, got really he got really into playing robo quest when i went back home and i was like playing co-op with him and then like hasn't played it since and hasn't touched any other game with a campaign since and he has access to like the playstation library that i have there at my parents house yeah, where i'm yeah, like yeah. you could you could play spider-man 2 right now if you want and it's just like no he what's wild is i watch him play and he's the most impatient person when it comes to i don't know what the game's asking me i, I don't want to play this you know like he actually did beat one of the Pokemon games, but for the most part, when I watched him play Breath of the Wild, like he never left like the main kind of plateau, and he still put a decent amount of hours. But if there was like a puzzle, if there was any slight sense Whatever of the like barrier entry, was. this is the barrier. He'd get really impatient, and then I watch him play Apex, and he gets destroyed, you know, twenty times in a row in less than a minute, and just keeps on going. I'm like, dude, <laughs> how do you like? How do you have patience for this and not that? So I. Anyway, I hope, you know, keep right, you know, do not let him watch any of these streamers play, you know, Minecraft and well, you know how don't not, do not let him watch Carl Jacobs. Now, since, oh God, never. Are you yeah. kidding me? I don't want to meet in this many gummies. Uh, but when you look around like our life and what he's being raised in, like we talk, me and Jen joke about this all the time, right? Like it's just going to be like, he won't, he inevitably is going to just want to be a sports kid. He's going to inevitably want to just go be a horse kid or something. It'll be like, Jesus Christ, it'll be the most boring not. shit in the world that his parents like. She helps make video games. I have video games early. You know, all the free shit in the world He's is gonna coming to the house. <laughs> doesn't care. Yeah, I'm sure it's how it'll be. Andy, though, like, do you do you see yourself slowing down at all? No, because I I I feel like I will be on this fucking like content grind for the rest of my life, and it's what I love doing and. When I'm not doing it, I feel like I'm falling behind. So there's like this sense of urgency to like just do something with it. Um, but no, like I, I always want to be playing the latest thing. I always want to experience the newest <laughs> tech. And I think that's like kind of where I find my joy. And if I'm, if I'm not experiencing whatever the big single player thing is, then it's what multiplayer thing is out there right now that kind of, you know, has me in its grips. And right now it is Valorant, but... Other times it's been Overwatch and other times it's been Call of Duty. And I feel like that is always kind of on a rotation. But no, I, I don't think so. I love seeing the newest visuals. I know, love seeing what studios are doing next. And holy shit, I remember when this studio came out with this game. And now I'm 50 years old. And that's how this you know experience looks like now. I don't see it ever slowing down, honestly. Do you think that you're playing more games now than ever? Because I feel like ever. you in the last like couple years, like maybe last two years, have went from like... Like, oh, you play games? So like, oh my God, that is your life. Yeah, yeah, for sure. And a, a lot of it is like doing streaming on the side and trying to find the new next exciting thing that could maybe pop off uh, content-wise. Uh, but even then, I just, I, I want to experience a lot of different smaller games that maybe I could, you know, talk about more and be like, holy shit, you guys have not heard of this. You need to get your hands on this experience. Um, yeah, for sure. I think back to like before Kind of Funny and you know I, I i couldn't afford a whole lot of games and that's why i have such a a large gap in my gaming history when i was first in college because like i might red box a game every once in a while but i couldn't afford shit you know i'd i bought mass effect 2 and red dead 1 and that was about it <laughs> like i didn't have a whole lot of other single player experiences outside of that um and now it's like now it's like what shit i don't have time for any of these games that i want to be playing right now you know yeah yeah, I'm I'm pretty much in the same place I was a couple years ago where I think I'm going to be playing games for the rest of my life the way that I play games now. Like, I feel like 
I, uh, more so than most people here, are kind of funny, I think. I'm like, I know what I like, and I'm going to play those things. I'm a big franchise boy. It's very similar to me with, like, movies as well. It's like, I love the franchises, love keeping up with all of it, but then I also love A24. You know what I mean? I love, like, the every once in a while, you get that smaller thing that just, like, really hits or is very specific to my taste, and... Because of how long I've been playing games, the type of games I've been playing with Nintendo and all of that, I feel like there are a lot more of these smaller games that are like very up my alley, whether it's a Tony Hawk like or a like some type of retro, pretty much anything at this point. Like a lot of my gaming taste at their peak was genres that kind of don't necessarily exist that much anymore, like things like rhythm games or whatever, where the genre in terms of mainstream popularity doesn't exist, but in terms of the indie scene is popping off. So let me, it's like, let me make a suggestion to you. And Blessing, you could back me up on this. There's a rhythm game out there called Sekiro. That was yeah. that twice. <laughs> I try, man. It's a rhythm I, parry game. I, I've tried <laughs> like three times now, the first hour of it. And it like I just don't have the patience like that. And it's like I'm sure I can it's push like, through. Like that kid. And it is some get good shit, honestly. That kid. But, He's but, like that kid is what Craig said. Oh, oh. My nephew, nephew good. brother. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. I, I like the kid, I'm fucking 3,000 miles away. <laughs> <laughs> Me and Slimer are going through hoops right now, right? <laughs> but, like, I, I think about it. Uh, and you, you guys talked about, like, the games that kids play nowadays. And I wonder if, you know, every generation, because there hasn't been that many that have played video games, period. Like, we're still very early in all of this where... I think we're finally hitting a point that like when, you know, as trite as this is to say, like Mario Galaxy is a retro game, like that whole thing. It's like kind of wild to think that the space between now and Mario Galaxy and Mario Galaxy before it, it's pretty much equidistant. You know what I mean? So it's like, there's not that many. It's a crazy word. It's a great said. word. Good job. No. <laughs> Whoa. I was word. impressed too, but I was going to let it go. Yeah. <laughs> but my point is, it's like, you know, what is retro is going to always adapt and change and as people grow, but it's not like movies and TV that have had a lot more generations where you're either there or you weren't, you know, now it's like we're finally at a point that there will be gamers growing up that never touch Mario Brothers 1, you know what I mean, or Mario Brothers 3 even, and like that's just the way of things, like I don't even know that that's necessarily as much of a travesty as I feel it is in my heart, but It's just um, travesty because it's different to you. Totally. Like I feel like that's already happened, you know, I, I joke around yep. about being old, but like and P.S. I love you talking to Bless and Janet back in the day, right? Years ago when she worked here. Uh, when it would be these conversations and it, I'd mention a game that I reviewed at IGN and neither of them would play it because they were in like junior high or something, right? And it's like already you're seeing that time really stretch out, I think. And so, yeah, the fact that it isn't ubiquitous anymore because for so long we could mention anything to anyone in the circle, the work, IGN or whatever. It's like, oh, yeah, they played that on NES. They played that on Genesis. Or they didn't play it, but they know about it. Yeah. You know what I mean? It's like they know, like, oh, I, I know – my final fantasy was this but i know my friends was this but like we can fill in the gaps so you knew somebody that was rocking hard for every iteration in every major franchise because there were just weren't that many of them you know nowadays it's like that's impossible to happen and that's just that's a good thing at the end of the day more games are being made and whatever but i think about my generation of my friends which i am easily like the most into games at this point um but a lot of my friends do play a lot of games and they they find that to be like their they're fun in their life. You know, they, they have their work. They don't work in video games. They work yeah. outside of it. But video games are their, their, their little treat, their reward. And they still somehow, without my help, some of them play Call of Duty, which like, I'm very surprised by. Um, but that I feel like is the Halo lineage. But I'm so surprised that the PlayStation first party titles are the games for them. Like Uncharted, Last of Us, Spider-Man, Horizon, Days Gone even. They play all of those without me talking about them. And it's like, mm -hmm. there's something about that gen my generation of people that like followed the lineage of the original God of War and just like what a PlayStation 2 game actually meant to where we're at now. And it's just like- It's like, it a, is, big, it's like a big movie coming. It's like, I don't- <coughs> Totally. I don't care about, you know, who created the atomic bomb necessarily, but I'll watch it if Christopher Nolan makes a movie about it. You know, like yep. they, they know, they've experienced those games when they were younger and they know that Uncharted was- such like this big experience for them that why not go watch that newest movie? Why not check out the new game from Naughty Dog? Because you know that that quality is going to be there, you know? Totally. And it's uh, it's very interesting to see like some of my friends, like some of my friends that did not, I know for a fact, ever play Final Fantasy VII are playing through Rebirth right now. And I'm just like, that's wild to me. That there's just some level of like cachet that these titles have that it feels more tentpole. And it's like, well, I'm not into games, but oh, this, I know that's the big one. I know that's one to play. And it's like, I feel like that is going to go away to some extent. Like that generation's already, I think, getting phased out. And these kids are playing like Fortnite and Fortnite has a million different games in it. Like it's interesting to think of like 
what, what not only what's next, but like as they grow up, is Fortnite just going to be around? Maybe not forever, but like. Is I think there are younger games. Like, I mean, yeah. I, I remember visiting my uh, nephews a couple years ago, and one of them couldn't stop talking about this game called Friday Night Funkin'. And I was like, what the fuck is Friday Night Funkin'? I look it up, it's the biggest thing, thing on YouTube. And I've never once heard about this game. Friday in our, Night Funkin'. Friday Night Do you know what a, it is? Uh, it's like a rhythm game that has like a bunch of mods and like you can like in, I guess install different I still don't know fully what it is all I know is that this kid was like obsessed with it on YouTube and I looked it up and yeah like sure, sure enough it has like millions of views of uh, in content creators that are making videos with it and like even you know um, now that we're doing game showdown like one of the games there is that I'll um, play a video game soundtrack for you guys and you guys guess what the song is and there's, there's a website I usually go to I go to that website now it's a bunch of Friday Night Funkin' songs on there, and what I'm like, the heck? I'm like, this is a thing. Like, can I see some gameplay for Friday Night Funkin'? Yeah, you can br br uh, bring that up. Like, that's a thing already, and none of us know about it. Yeah. Right? And like, that is, like, at the time, I think he was eight years old, seven years old, and like, that's taken over him and his friends' worlds. Like, that's already happening in terms of the. That's games what that are YouTube through. does. I mean, we think about Five Nights at Freddy's. Mm -hmm. um, I'll never forget back when I first started working here, we did a let's play for Bending, Bendy and the Ink Machine. Mm -hmm. And then I went back home, and my Fuck nieces it. were like, "All of my friends are playing at Benny and the Ink Machine." I was like, "Why?" I was like, "YouTube." Like, every, you saw a video, and all your friend group kind of catches on to that. <laughs> Wait, yeah. What the fuck is this game? This is a rhythm. Why game. have you been holding this for me? Blast <laughs> the DDR. Oh, yeah. <laughs> I mean, maybe you should check out. Maybe you should meet make some Friday. Yeah, night dude. Funk I content. need to funk on a Friday night. What? I think Mike might be aware of this. This could really kind of like give us a larger. Uh, age group, you know. We could just do the thing like on TikTok where we put the podcast at the top of the screen and Friday Night Funkin' at the bottom of the screen and we never talk about it. It's just always it's on. Just yeah. there. It's just happening. Yeah, yeah. I, I feel like between this, something like Only Up, which did like, you know, hit our sphere, right? Because it's more of a streamer game, but like you know, that, you talk about Fortnite, you talk about um, Five Nights at Freddy's, right? Like I feel like there's becoming more and more categories of games that are going to push us mm -hmm. just older and older. Like I think for me, right? Like I'm the young, yeah, I'm the youngest here and I'm like, I'm probably now become like I'm part of the older generation of video games, Absolutely, right? Because yeah. I am because you, know, you played Mario 64. Yeah, like I played <laughs> Mario 64 growing up, and now it is you're talking about kids not having played Mario, right? Like for them, that's probably like Citizen Kane. <laughs> the way I think about it, I'm yep. like, oh yeah, that's a black and white movie, probably that like you know people in the 60s watched. There's no special <laughs> effects. Yeah, <laughs> like that's how these kids are thinking about Mario, yeah. like Super Mario Brothers, where they're like, oh yeah, that's ancient history. Yeah, I want to keep talking about this, but after a word from our sponsor. Kinda Funny turns nine years old today. We could have made it nine days without your support. That's why 2024 is all about doubling down on our shows and making it simpler than ever for you to get the most out of our content. Our revamped Kinda Funny membership is your one-stop shop for all our amazing content, which now includes on a weekly basis, the Kinda Funny podcast, In Review, the Kinda Funny games cast, PS I Love You XOXO, the Kinda Funny X cast, the brand new series Kinda Funny Game Showdown. Five episodes of Kind of Funny Games Daily and five exclusive Greg Wave vlogs. And five days of streaming fun with me and the gang here in our newly revamped streaming space. It's going to be filled with a ton of laughter and a whole lot of shenanigans. We'll see you there. That's more than 20 pieces of content a week from an 11 person independent team in San Francisco. That's a lot. And to get the most out of it, all we're asking for is $10. $10 gets you the Kind of Funny membership, and that entitles you to ad-free versions of the shows, the ability to watch the podcast live as we record them, and the exclusive access to my daily show, Greg Way. You can get your Kind of Funny membership on patreon.com slash kindoffunny or youtube.com slash kindoffunnygames. Yes, we are expanding our Kind of Funny membership offering to YouTube so people can take full advantage of the platform they prefer. If you want to go above and beyond the Kind of Funny membership to support us, we will still have higher Patreon tiers, albeit with some changed up perks. We just wanted to make the message as clear as possible that the $10 Kind of Funny membership is for the masses to get all the core content people love. Everything above that is very appreciated. The support means the world to us. You all are the best. But the $10 Kind of Funny membership available on both Patreon.com slash Kind of Funny and YouTube.com slash Kind of Funny Games is where we see the value of what we do. Kind of Funny is a dream come true and we wouldn't have it without you. We hope if you've ever enjoyed the content, you can support us for at least a month as we prepare for our biggest year ever. Until next time, it's been our pleasure to serve you.
I like how your definition of uh, Citizen Kane is, is like <laughs> actually Night of the Living Dead. <laughs> I'm like, right. when did that movie come out? The 40s? <laughs> Greg, hey, what about you? What about me? Do you think Will you'll ever, ever stop, playing, stop game? playing video games? No. Uh, I don't think I'll ever stop playing games. I think that'd be impossible at this point. Uh, 40 years in, right? I do think it's interesting to listen to Bless and Andy talk about it, right? And like bless to debate slowing down or stuff and then andy to be like no i don't think i will that's what i'm in for that's the grind and stuff like that i think inevitably you slow down you know what i mean that's something that like hasn't been hard for me to accept but it's been something i've i can look at and go objectively obviously right and i think there's a lot to that of like you know as kind of funny got bigger and bigger for you and me we got more and more work to do right which meant inevitably less time to play games at work which meant playing more games at home which of course is just tough to do when you're tired and doing a million things let alone then when you get a partner let alone when you have a child right and so like i feel like i used to be way more of a, a blessing right when you look at me at ign and how i consumed games right it was well i know i'm on beyond on thursday i know i need to talk about something on game scoop on top of that i know that i work for ign and i want to use that as a platform to spotlight the 16 games I just saw at PAX East, so I'm going to go write about all of them and talk about all of them, blah, 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 let alone reviews and previews and all that stuff, right? And that, obviously, at IGN changed, I think, as you saw me go through the ranks of just being a PlayStation editor to leading the team, which obviously had a whole bunch of stuff, to then being a video host. And so, like, I think there's a whole bunch of ebbs and flows to everything and how it all works out, but it also comes down to where I'm at now, right, of being a dad of a two and a half year old, being a partner, being a peer to all you guys, being coworkers, trying to help run the company. Like, that's what is still the struggle for me sometimes. It's when I go home and like, I know I should play X, but I want to play Y. And it's just that point in my career and in the conversations and the shows we do that I know that if I force myself tonight to play Y, I won't enjoy it. So I, ha I can't do that to that game. I need to go with what's pulling me right now, right? Like, we we're talking about it a little bit on PS I Love You in a few other shows, I guess, so far, and just talking to each other. But coming off of uh, Open Roads being the most recent review I, I wanted to do, then it's to this point of like, cool, I have a moment to catch my breath. I can play anything I want to play. I need to play Final Fantasy VII, I know. At least touch it, and blah, blah, blah. And it's that thing of just like, all weekend long, all I did was binge Helldivers in WWE. If I had time, I was playing one of them, depending on what was happening. If it's a, I'm hanging out with Jen, it's going to be WWE. doesn't need my full attention. If I'm going to go downstairs, it's going to be Helldivers, right? And so, like, that still sucks that I'm behind. I feel like, I feel like I'm behind on Final Fantasy, right? I feel like that's one I got to check off my list. I got to get more. But it's like, I know to sit down and force that, that would be wrong for that. And it would, I would inevitably not like it the way I need to. So to build towards doing something on it maybe it'll be better maybe i'll book out time at work etc so on and stuff but then you look at stuff like rise of the ronin that i was really enjoying that i want a platinum and it's like i know there are so many more hours in front of me that that is like well i know i'm not going to get the i have right now a week is too much right because i'm going to philadelphia so it's like no i have two days to play that? games wwe stuff don't worry about me. uh i Superstar. know you know you know they gotta have a host number one show this is awesome uh, -huh. uh I got stu these two days to play, so it's like, well, I don't even want to start a Final Fantasy, right? Uh, there's a game I had requested uh, a PlayStation code for last week, and I install and haven't started. And it was like, you know what? Come back to them. like, can I actually get a Switch code? Because that'll be the more actual Realistic, change. You know what I mean? Yeah. And so that's what it really comes down to of trying to balance what we do and what I am and who I am now, right? Of cool... How do I serve my interests? How do I further the goals of the content we're making? And how do I balance those in terms of I, I can binge right now and do a weekend of it because I can still make content out of that. And I also knew what the headlines were for this week. And it wasn't like I needed a preview or review. Uh, but then looking ahead, where do I fit that stuff in? How do I do that? Yeah. And so it's a it's a constant game of shell. But I think like to your point, Blessing, who you are now will inevitably change, right? Whether it's taking on more responsibility it kind of funny throughout the years, whether it's moving on to greener pastures and doing something completely different, right? And when that happens, I think the objectives for the job will change. And it's the same thing for you, Andy, right? Of like, th there are those days where I see you streaming and tearing something. I'm like, oh man, I kind of wish I could go do that right now. You know what I mean? But I'm like, I got to do these dishes. <laughs> I got to do these dishes. <laughs> I got to wash the bottle. I got to walk the, you know what I mean? Like, and so inevitably that all adds up and changes and stuff. But I think it's one of our strengths as a company of so many different people coming in with different perspectives on what they do and why they do it. To Greg's point about uh, the way you play games, especially talking about WWE 2K and Helldivers, right? Like, I think for me, I associate playing new games with content creation. 
And like that's been it's been that way for me, like even before working at Kinda Funny, right? Like I started making content about video games with OKB stuff in like 2016. So for the last eight years or so, like I am playing new games with the idea that I'm gonna make content around those new games. But you know, I go back to even this last weekend of me playing games and you know, I don't think it's necessarily the idea that as I get older, I'll slow down playing games overall. I think it's more so just the new games. Like, I, I this last weekend, I was playing Hades for fun because I enjoyed Hades. And then also, I was playing Dragon Ball Z Budokai Tenkaichi on my Steam Deck, allegedly. Mm. Um, and, like, that was just me, you know, hanging back, chilling, doing that while watching Shogun. And I think for me, that is kind of where... It, like, if I stop this content creation grind in the way that it is, I'm reviewing things, I'm having impressions on things, I'm reporting on things or whatever, or not reporting, but, you know, talking about gaming news, keeping up with things, right? Like, I think I'll just end up just going back and playing older games. Like, I don't think I'm playing every single new thing. I think yeah. I am doing the comfort thing of, you know, the way that you're doing Helldivers and WWE, like, I'll probably go back and finally play Souls games. Yeah. Or, like, go back to, like, the genres that I know that I love the most, right? Like, for me, it is, I think <laughs> I talked to you about this uh, recently one of our conversations that, like, you know, I, I think I love a fighting game. I love a roguelite. I like a third person shooter, right? Which is why I haven't gotten around to Helldivers yeah. 2 yet, right? Like I'll probably just end up sticking with those things that I love as opposed to trying out everything because I want to be informed for the job. I talked about it a lot at IGN at the time, and I think you could apply to a bunch of different stuff now, but definitely this conversation, right? Of like, I used to say when I was doing Beyond and Scoop and all that jazz and we were, it was, you know, in the throes of DC Universe Online. I was like, no, you need to understand that if, my job wasn't to play games. If I was still working at the Tribune, right, I would come home and just play this game. Like, I wouldn't mm -hmm. I wouldn't be chasing the next thing or trying this thing or do I know I like this, and I know I'm not giving it enough time, right? That's how I feel right now with Helldivers still, to, you know, as much of the time as I put it in Helldivers, where it's like, I still look when Gary puts up a screenshot, I'm like, ah. Oh. Level 46, fuck, I wish I was 46, right? <laughs> gotta, and it's not get, that I, gotta get this piece of shit. Is it, no, it's not that. It's not <laughs> yeah. like I'm, you know, knocking Gary. It's just like, ah, but he didn't review the three games I've done or the fourth thing. Or the, you know what I mean? Like, there's all the stuff that happens in between it where yeah. Gary's a great example right now, right? Of like, he's on sabbatical from kind of funny, right? Because he's working so hard. He's doing so much work. And so that, yeah, when he gets the free time, he wants to go play Helldivers or whatever else he's playing. But like, again, he's able to go and focus on something. And I feel like, that's the way it would shift if you had another job. And I think our jobs will continue to change and evolve and, you know, do whatever. But I think it'll still always be somewhere around celebrating games, doing new stuff, trying stuff out. I was, I go for it. Well, I was going to say, I, I, every now and then I'll go to my PlayStation. Like, if you go to your, your profile on your PlayStation account, you can look at the games that you played and you can organize them by time played. And, you know, I'll look at then I'll see something like GTA Online and I've played, like, over 500, probably somewhere between 500 to 700 hours of it, right? I'll look and I'll see... Um, like Overwatch, and I've played like over 300 hours of Overwatch. I've not put nearly that amount of time into one game since like, <laughs> since before I worked at Kind of Funny, right? Like it's probably been like since 2016 or 2017 or so, uh, since I'm putting that amount of time. And I think part of that is just, you know, again, what Greg's talking you about can. in terms of, yeah, you can't really do that, right? You have to like go on to the next thing or at least want to try different things. The old, you know, adage at IGN, and I think it works for us, t well, yeah, to, to us to a degree, right? Was the fact that we used to say, we are the experts at a video game until it comes out. Until the moment it drops publicly, we're the experts, right? You've had more time than anybody. I remember, how, you know, how much uh, Killzone 2 multiplayer I played and all the stuff when they turned the servers. And it was like one of those things of like, in a day, I was outdated on info and strats and all this other stuff, right? Because there's people who just can commit to it and just play that thing and want to be all about it. And it's like, that's awesome. I love that. But it was like a real, at times, tough pill to swallow, right? Because you, you are the expert on it or getting to it. But then... You get out there, you're like, oh, well, no, I was never, I, I could never do that because I can't keep play, playing that the way I want. It's getting emotional right now. I, I just wish I could play more Peace Walker. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> no, I mean, it's, it's so wild. Like, I definitely wish, I wish that we could clone ourselves and play all the things and do all the stuff, right? It's like, God. I feel like I. If I could I, clone myself and make TikToks, God damn it. <laughs> that'd be amazing right <laughs> uh but like at this table i feel like i'm the one that plays games at work the least just because of what my job is the most and like playing games is like the smaller part of it yeah. um and i i wish that i could more but it's like that's just not how this this works but like tomorrow i'm gonna sit down with andy and play uh pepper grinder because that's a game that i'm like i nicholas know you oh, with say with Nick. Say yeah. with Nick. Me and Nick, um, which you know that'll change the experience a bit, Andy. Uh, <laughs> real let me down there. But uh, uh, no, jokes aside, like I, I see that game and I'm like, I know I'm gonna love this. You know, Barrett plays it. He tells me he's like, Tim, you're gonna love this. We had such a good time with it. And I'm just like, I just don't know when I'm going to actually be able to give this thing the time it deserves. Yeah. And it's not that much time. Like they're saying, it's like three, four hours to play. That's the perfect just, example, Tim, of a game that 
like I started and I, I every night I'm, I, I get to bed a little bit too late and I look at my Steam Deck next to my bed. I'm like, man, I, I if time, I baby. was if I was here 30 minutes earlier, I'd put 30 to 40 minutes into Pepper Grinder right now. Like I had been because I'm about maybe uh, an hour in at this point. But yeah, that Pepper Grinder is like the perfect example of a game right now, Tim, that is something I really, really want to play. But there's Dragon's Dogma 2. Well, there's really just Dragon's Dogma 2. And then plotting <laughs> See, out the rest of the year, Tim, just thinking like, when do I start this Elden Ring replay? Because mm. you can't hop into the DLC. If you hop into the DLC with, a new, with your old character, you're playing on New Game Plus. And that makes the game harder. What do you mean? <laughs> what, are you talk, what are you talking about? You, you you're can't. lying. <laughs> you, you, the game no. is harder on New Game Plus. Yeah. Wait, so... Which is I, why, remember when you did Bloodborne and Imran was like, before... You beat the game, be, get to the DLC first, mm -hmm. because if you beat the game, then try to do the DLC, you're doing it on New Game Plus. Wait, so because I beat the game, I have to do New Game you Plus? Don't have, well, yeah, over. you have to do New Game Plus, yeah, yeah. yeah. Fuck! God yeah. damn it! Yeah, God so I've, I've, it. and I had started a New Game Plus run, an oversight. and <laughs> I played I am, 100 hours! I started that like a year and a half ago, and then oh, never went fuck, back, and so I'm, I'm not at the point where I... I have access to the DLC, so I have to like I think kind of play through a good chunk of the game to get there. And I think Andy, I I, I looked at the schedules. I, I looked at our calendars. Right, I'm thinking 30 days before the DLC is when we jump back in there. Because then you get back. you give yourself a month, and then you get reacquainted, and it's not too early that you like do it all, and then you're already ready, and you're ready too early, and then you forget the controls already. You know, it's not even that you're getting reacquainted. Like I, I made a new character over the weekend. Just I haven't played this in a while. I was like, fuck, this is the best game of all time. <laughs> so, like, <laughs> <laughs> so you're gonna do it from just like a, a normal brand new play. character. Fuck, brand you new think character. I should, do you think I should do that? Do you think it's here's really, the thing? Really Vati hard? Video put out a new video. Vati Video put out a new video yeah, but, yeah. recently. Uh, I think like three or four days ago, that was like, you want to play the DLC? Here's what you need to prepare for. Mm. Here's all the things you need to know. Remember, all the uh, Tim, you need larval tears. Of course you do. To, re to redo your Naturally. build. Here are all of the golden seeds to then have more flasks. Here, are, like it's kind of just like this prep thing, you know. So watch those Get videos. Ready, ready. But watch like, do, the like, five follow-ups. Do I give Write up an the new game me. plus run then? Yeah, you give it up. So that's what the chat seems to be saying, just to be clear, that if you haven't started New Game Plus, you're okay. Oh, okay. Yeah, that's true. If you oh. haven't started a new oh, game. If you beat the game, God. you're fine. Okay. But as long as you didn't start Oh, because it reloads you, doesn't it? I yeah. beat the game. Yeah. I'm good. Thank yeah, God. I started that New Game Plus run, and let me tell you, that first area going back to it, oh, like, man. oh, you're cleaning up. Clowning like, up that like tree setting little piece oh, of shit on the, on the horse. It's awesome. It's so satisfying. But Sorry, if that's Tim, not what the rest grinder. of the experience is going to be. Oh, that's rough. Yeah. Sorry, Tim. Pepper Grinder, my bad. No, nobody cares about that. In, no, in the <laughs> chat, though, there's something interesting for this conversation, right? Is uh, Ultra BMW says, Helldivers 2 is a great game, but Dragon's Dogma 2 and Final Fantasy 7 Rebirth just took over in a way. And I think, obviously, he's, I think he's talking about his own personal experience here, but it's also interesting of, like, it's because of what those experiences are that they're not taking over for me. Right sure. where it is, the hell divers is the all right. I have thirty minutes. I might have two and a half hours. I'm not sure what I'm getting into. I know I can do that. Whereas that's a terrible way I think to engage with Dragon's Dogma or Final Fantasy VII. Right of like mm -hmm. jump in and then well, I'd rather I need a day at work where it's like I get a good five hours under my belt to get the wheels going on that. So then I could start doing the pop in, pop out. I know what's up. I know what's going on. I yeah. think schedule wise, things have lined up so perfect for me. Even I, I think about last year's lull where I got really really into destiny 2 because there was just not a whole lot really draw there wasn't like i'm sure well i'm sure there was right but there wasn't like a game that i was super into that was like here's the 80 hour campaign you're gonna need to play i just put a lot of time into destiny 2 and i think that you know if if uh dragon's dogma 2 came out the same day as call of duty warzone in 2020 i wouldn't be playing Dragon's Dogma too. I, I was addicted to Call of Duty Wars. That's all I wanted to do. Like in my off hours was just we're streaming this every fucking night. And a lot of it just comes down to priority, whatever you're into the most. Uh, and I totally uh, like I think about Greg last year with Tears of the Kingdom and how you get off a couple of weeks and, and that throws off, off the, the whole cycle. Man, yeah. And you're just like you lose the is there a part of you, Greg, that kind of feels like, oh, I'm losing the, the, the sort of public drive as well, where I'm like, I don't feel like I'm with everyone now sure, yeah, yeah, on this yeah, journey, yeah. you know? Yeah, the conversation, right? That's what we talk about all the time is being a part of the conversation. And Left again, the station. Speculation station? 
No, the conversation left the station. Yeah, okay. Uh, and so I feel like, you know, again, with our roles and our jobs being, you know, yeah, tears I didn't review. I was reviewing the things around tears, mm -hmm. so it was so hard to get back to when there was more to review and there's more to talk about. And it was, all right, so everybody's saying this game is a 10 out of 10. Do you really need me to say it's a 10 out of 10? Is Greg Miller's opinion that valuable on this, or is it more valuable to chase this other thing, talk about the other thing, do this thing, right? Like, try to disseminate all the information and stuff, let alone how much I would love to be able to go back and do, yeah, old reviews, go back, you know, re-review web of shadows you know what i mean like stupid shit like that but it's like trying to find the time to do that yeah that oh, sounds well, great though. i would like to get back to dragon's dogma too but i'm also in the place where it's similar to what you guys are saying like there's a certain um vibe that i'm like waiting for right i'm waiting for it to hit for me right like i'm i think i'm just not in the in the mood for it at the moment yeah. and i'm like Music's i don't want such a huge part of it yeah and like i'm like i don't want to hate this game right now it's the reason why i think i've fallen back to playing um hades is yeah. like pretty decent game yeah pretty decent game mm -hmm. and also it is like in my head, I know that I'm just playing one run, yep. right? And one run, it lasts way longer than it does in my head because in my head, I'm like, oh, yeah, it'll be like 15 minutes. It ends up being an hour. Yeah. But like, you know. Same thing with me and WWE Faction Wars. Yeah. Cool. I'm going to do one run. Cool. Cool. And it's something I, like I know I can put it down. I know that like I can get a satisfying like, oh, I'm going to level up this character all the way through this run, hit that apex, and then it's finished. And it's like, cool. I just had a satisfying session with this game. Dragon's Dogma 2 like kind of demands it seems like it demands way more of me right and I'm like I'm well, I demand that of it like I yeah. love an open world action RPG so it's like yeah I don't want to do it where I, I screwed up I, I mean even the hour or two I played of it was very much like all right I'm already kind of tired and this is taking a while to get going that's a bad way to start it right I want to be able to I'm ready to go engage another five hours okay I see where I'm going let's go yeah but that even comes back to like I'm not uh, picked up or I'm not played through Pepper Grinder yet like I've only played a couple of levels and like you know, I have a flight later this week. Hopefully, I'm able to pick it up then. Um, but it, it's, again, the thing where I'm like, all right, Pepper Grinder, I'm not necessarily in the mood for it, but I know it's the, it's the kind of game that I like. And that's where it kind of gets tough for the job we do, where it is, I, you know, I can wait until I'm in the mood for this thing, but the game is out now. Yeah. Like, the conversation's happening now. What's also fascinating about that and the job that we do in Pepper Grinder specifically, right, is the fact that we are a team. And so, like, I downloaded pepper grinder review period and i jumped in and i did one world of it and i was like cool not my not not a greg game i don't need to do this and i knew you were playing i knew i knew what people were playing mm -hmm. it, right like i know there's a conversation to be had i know you're gonna get to it on the stream so it's like thinking holistically about the content it is yeah. very much like me leveling up and we have covered having somewhere more experiences else. yeah it's more valuable for the greg part of the pie than it is me struggling through pepper grinder to be like okay yeah it's funny for me i think my biggest problem because now we're just kind of turning this into a gaming therapy session my <laughs> biggest problem with games isn't even so much the time as much as it's how i get the most out of a game where i am just not a multitasker when it comes to media period mm -hmm. like i don't understand how kevin can be playing a game listening to a podcast listening to music and watching a tv show at the same time i want to interrupt you, you right here buzzy how the fuck are you playing a game and listen watching shogun oh dude it's great do you understand well, japanese like, what the fuck? <laughs> i'm watching it dubbed <laughs> <laughs> yeah okay yeah 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 but even when you watch it dubbed it's only dubbed like half the and, time and it's the same That's actors so funny it's the, it's the, it's the actors Wait, doing, is it really them? like for it's most of the actors like who that huh. speak English as well doing the dub? Yeah, that's awesome. But yeah, yeah. they're like talking while the um, was Anjin <laughs> while he's in the room. Yeah. They speak in Japanese. I'm like, fuck. Well, why did I choose dub then? Like, what are we doing here? <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> but uh, for me, I just feel like I'm I'm very particular. I think a lot of this is my tech obsession, where it's like I want everything to be the best it could be, and like I get very very like obsessive over dead pixels or over like oh i know this isn't sounding the way it's supposed to like let me make sure it's all set whatever like i'm just i get such a high from that stuff and i've lucked out that my entire life has been building towards making sure that my setup was like peak for that shit which of course just like pc gaming greg comes with a lot of issues comes with a lot of troubleshooting comes with a lot of like <coughs> things getting in the way but because i have such a fantastic setup to play my games I'm like, I don't want to play them any other way. Like, I want to play them when I'm like dialed in, sitting there, nothing's bothering me, and I'm just getting immersed in this. And like, that's Final Fantasy VII Re Rebirth for sure. Like, that was my entire experience there for the most part. Um, but it's at the point now, I'm like, even something like Pepper Grinder, I'm like, I care too much about video game music. I care too much about the sound effects. Like, I can't imagine playing a game on silent. Like, and I know that's how Greg plays most games. Like, not most. A lot then, like whatever. We were talking about this recently, but so don't want to put words in your mouth. No, yeah, well, it's a good one for the remote play stuff, right? Like, there's levels to it of what I'm doing. Whereas, like, 
I don't remember, 30 hours or whatever it is into Ronin now. Like, I can play that one on silent while I go clear a map or kill a dude or whatever, you know what I mean? But most of the time, I'll have the Pulse Explorer earbud in one. Yeah. That way I can still hear what's going on. I had a plan over last year, Tim, that, you know, unfortunately we couldn't end up doing because of logistics, but it was to uh, send uh, Greg's wife, Jen, and his son, Ben, off to, on a vacation for mm -hmm. a week so he could play Tears of the Kingdom. And I want to do that with you when Ghost of Tsushima comes out. Mm -hmm. We send G and the dogs mm -hmm. out mm -hmm. on a week vacation to Barcelona. Whoa! All, all Barcelona. expenses yeah, yeah, paid yeah. by you. Great. And Let then, me tell you about the kind of funny membership. We need you to buy a few. <laughs> <laughs> Barcelona. And then we just, like, Tim's got that big ultra-wide yeah. OLED. Oh, my Let's God. Go. Ghost of Tsushima on PC is going to look insane. I can't dude. wait to see it, man. Yeah, it's going to no, look unbelievable. But the, the problem I'm facing is, like, Greg, even what you're talking about with the portal, even with Rebirth, when I got to the point that I am just kind of grinding, and I am just playing Queen's Blood, and, yeah. like, I've done this a bunch of times. I have this problem where like, I'm like, I'm not enjoying this as much as I can because I'm not hearing the Queen's Blood music right now. And I yeah, really, yeah. really, like, I really want to. Like, that to me is, that's what playing a video game is. It's like a full immersive experience, even if it is quick, easy, simple uh, little things. And like, I know that it's me just breaking myself more and more as time goes on. But something like Pepper Grinder, like, I'm... Like I've created a situation tomorrow where I'm playing on stream. That'll be the only way I really get to play this game. And already I'm just like... Thinking, I'm like, man, I know this is not the way I'm going to want to play this because, like, I do not do good under pressure playing games in front of people. I don't want Nick being there, and Nick's going to be there. Yeah, so fuck. Yeah, you know. But mm -hmm. also, I want to listen to it. And, but then there's penis. that making the content <laughs> and all of it, which I'm excited for, and I am. I I do want to put myself out there more. I had such a good time playing Princess Peach with you last week, but um, yeah, it's I, a big problem I've been having is. I have so many solutions. I now have my Steam Deck, which I absolutely love, and I've been using it a ton, but. I'm constantly thinking about how it's not the optimal experience. Yeah. <laughs> how See, do you fix me, plus? <laughs> I mean, that's I think that's why I've just given up and I just listen to podcasts while playing video games. I think that also it's also because, you know, as you're describing playing FF7 in that optimal experience, I'm like I'm thinking about the review process for that game and I'm like I don't think I could like pull myself I don't think I can walk into a different room like go into if I had a theater, right? Go into the theater <laughs> put on everything and then sit down for that session and then keep doing that for how many times over the course of three to four weeks, however long we had to review it uh, and do that. Right. Like for me, the only way that I'm able to, you know, there's a, um, a call in we got uh, during uh, the kind of funny happy hour. I forget who was there and who wasn't there. I don't think you guys were there. I wasn't there. We were watching ghostbusters. All three oh, no, me, me and Greg were watching ghostbusters. Yeah. And somebody called in there like, how do you guys manage, uh, like there was a call. I was like, yo, I like I make a list of like the media that I want to watch. How do you guys manage to like get through these lists of things? And my answer is just that like, yeah, sometimes I'll just fucking knock shit out at the same time, right? Like if I'm not um making these concessions to play Final Fantasy or play Bellatra or play whatever game, like if I'm not being if I'm not playing the shit on a plane, then it's like cool. I just I don't have time to play it, right? Because it's either that or I'll end up getting burnt out because it then becomes. I'm going to play this stuff during my free time and then say no to hang out with my friends after work and then do this. And like, you know, that for me is where things get difficult is trying to organize that stuff. And that's how I play as many games as I do is that I'm like, cool. Like I'm going to play Bolatro while doing laundry, while stacking up all the, all, uh, all the shit. But yeah, that also means that I have to say no to some of the optimal experiences to playing some of these games. See what I've sacrificed is the optimal experience of viewing stuff. Like, you know what I mean? Over the weekend when I was binging all these games, I was watching uh, the Bray Wyatt documentary on my uh, phone. Like, they're using the Pulse headset so I could listen to both, right? And that was a great experience for me because when it was something great, I would stop and watch or whatever. But it, even that's more of a podcasty kind of narrative. You know, yeah. Mm -hmm. I think we just need games to be eight hours long. Yeah. That would be nice on. too. Yeah. I also think it's influenced some of my, my genre preferences, though, because like, I think that's why I really like roguelites. You know, I love Returnal because I listen to podcasts all throughout playing Returnal, and that game was perfect for it. And same with Hades. I'm like, I'm listening to stuff and watching stuff while playing Hades. And I'm like, this is absolutely perfect. So when you say you never beat Hades, you mean like the 10 completions? I, I never beat... Oh, no, I never got to the end of a run. Oh. I never beat the Hades boss. Yeah. I got to the boss where it was, you're fighting two people at once. It was like, I think, Asterius? Oh, yeah. The, and the bull other guy. guy and the, the other bull guy. guy and the yeah, other yeah. Dude. Yeah. yeah. Um, and I just hate boss fights where you're fighting two people at once. Uh. <laughs> and so I was like, fuck this. And I never went yeah. back. <laughs> Um, okay, that's fair. But now I've gotten I've gotten to like that Hades boss fight multiple times. I still haven't beat him. I'm getting there, but okay. I just got to get the perfect build. Hell, it's yeah. tough. God, yeah, it took me like 36. I think it was like 36 was for my first. I'm around there. Run and then I it was with the spear. And the spear was like, mm -hmm. oh Dude, shit, this changed the game. I had such a good build with the spear because I had the spear plus 
whenever I would do like I guess my regular attack, I would summon lightning, and then it would like the lightning would then infect other people chain. around oh, it. Dude. Yeah, the chain lightning. You talk about a chain lightning, get the fuck out oh, of here. Oh, dude, I, love I was fucking lightning. killing it. Diablo. Then, yeah. yeah, he just kicked my ass. But Bear, you were game. popping in to say something. I was just talking about how the Steam Deck just like really helped with like playing smaller games. Um, and yeah, I'm brain broken as well, where it's like it's hard for me to not put something on in the background while I'm playing on the Steam Deck. Uh, and so like I'm just thinking about the next few weeks, like Children of the Sun is coming out. We've got Yellow Taxi Ghost Room that Roger has been telling us to play. Um, which, which is so freaking good, by the way. Like, I, I played that but this weekend. But I also weekend. understand it's really fucking long, and so that's Oh, the is other, it really? Apparent, that's yeah. what Roger was saying. Yeah, it's, no, it's really long. long. Tim, and for that, I am out. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> for that yeah, reason, I am out. So that's, like, kind of what's holding me off on, like, uh, starting that up. And then, like, another Crab's Treasure is coming out at the end of the month and stuff, and I know those are going to be, like, those are three games that are coming out in the next month that I'm going to want to knock out quickly and so that'll those are gonna have to be uh steam deck uh playing them while something else is on in the dude in two, probably while while we're watching a uh, digimon in two Hell weeks yeah. no rest for the wicked like Ooh. see i'm not worried about that because that is early a, access that's early access and like i just i don't have the patience to be like yeah let me play a portion of the game and then give you feedback and like i just I'll play the game. I'm not going to be able to resist. I'm I'm just like Barrett on that front, but I'm still going to, I'm going to have to jump. I'll at least I'm tr- jump it, in yeah. and try for a little bit. And then yeah. get and now, that, away for four now that I've also probably had to accept that now I have to probably fully restart Elden Ring. I'll probably have to get back to that sooner. And then Stellar Blade is also at the end of the month. Here's what you could do with Elden Ring. If you want to be, if you want to be a little cheat and freak, be a little cheat and freak. You, you get it on PC and you nope. can, there's, you could download a save out there. You're not going to do it. He's out. People can upload saves. Andy, and, and I got a question for you. But What's then, up, like, what a surprise! What PC like a people cheat and doing underhanded like, illegal like, things. It, that's the that's the thing that I get worried about. Of like, I I, I liked the the character that I had built, and so that's where I'm kind of like hesitating. You, you can make them look like that. You can you can go to that little mirror where that little, where the lady hugs you. Remember her, Fia? She gives you hugs. Yeah. Is she. Uh, what? She's wearing all black. You go in there, and she's like. Let me let me sleep with you. Let me embrace you. I'll hug you. And you, oh, wait, Elden Ring. Elden Ring. Elden Ring. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. Sorry, I thought we were you still, still talking about no rest. <laughs> no, no, no. Yeah, in Elden Ring, you go, you go get hugged by her. But there's a mirror oh, there, yeah. and you can make yourself look the way you want. And oh, you get the larval looks. tears. You about change poison or some shit. Yeah, yeah, lar- yeah. larval tears. Yeah. Does she like give you poison when she hugs you? A Baldekin's blessing. Yeah. Oh, she gives you the debuff. Yeah, she does give you the debuff. I love how much you know about this, Andy. It's so fucking cool. Maybe, maybe that will be a Steam Deck thing. I'm telling you, you can download a, a, a build out there. What, what were you going to ask, Buzz? Um, early access game of the year. What's it going to be? Is it going to be No Rest for the Wicked, Hyper Lightbreaker, or Hades 2? That's a good question. Fuck. I know. <laughs> Holy shit. That's insane. That's an insane line. Write it down as a category for the um, awardees. We do. The kind of funniest? What? what smiley. 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 The you <laughs> chose it. <laughs> Jesus Christ. <laughs> <one thing>. Um... <laughs> Oh my goodness! <laughs> I I'm gonna go with. Oh my god! I'm probably gonna go with. No rest for the wicked. Wow! I'm going hyper light breaker. I'm going Hades too. Here's what I want with hyper light breaker though, and I, I uh, hey Hi- heart machine devs, you guys are making an am- amazing game. Can't wait for it. What I'd love is whenever I locked on in that game, the camera would like like do some weird kind of thing it wouldn't just like be a, a smooth lock on and that uh, was really really frustrating to me now you fix that you have a game of the year Goaty. but it's Goaty. still early access, early access but god damn year. that's so that's a great question i can't believe hades 2 early access this year i can't believe it either like i actually can't believe it like i don't think it's gonna happen oh okay but we'll see who picked it in uh fantasy oh i think i think any of us did roger, roger i think roger picked hyper lightbreaker yeah, but it's like it's a weird one because it has to get enough review scores to be on Open Critic, and is it going to do that in early access? Who knows? Great people question. are trying to sing Silk Song. That's not going to be early access. Yeah, no, there's so, no way. Who knows that this one? What it's going to be? Early access. Are people talking about it getting a store page on um, Xbox? Today? That's probably what it is. Yeah, on April Fool's Day, bless. Okay. I mean, okay. I clicked the link. It's, it's there. Fell for I clicked it. the link. Um, and it's on Nintendo too. Well, and, and their and their PR person like <laughs> tweeted it out. <laughs> you guys will uh, Hades see on the internet. owned by Team Snowbike Mike. Oh shit! Oh. Very interesting. That ain't coming out. God, man, video games. Yeah, 
Holy shit. I can't wait to get back home and play on this goddamn oh, monitor. Yeah, Holy dude. shit, man. That is awesome. Andy, well, can you do a stream with me in um, uh, Dragon's Dogma 2 during work hours? Oh my god, yes. Because I really want to get into that game. Yes, But it's dude. hard for me. Dude, I'm like... Uh, I'm struggling. Dude, I was, it's just like every... Me and Iota Edeberry aren't every are experience is, Every experience is so much fun. Like, the, not having fast travel was like so not even a worry for me because anytime I'm like, I gotta go all the way down there... And it's and I feel like Bilbo Baggins in The Hobbit, where mm -hmm. he's like, "We're going on an adventure," and me and my crew go out. And the the funniest thing is like a lot of these characters look ugly as shit, and it's uh, right, Capcom is essentially using their character creator to fill out the world with the same characters that you could likely make uh, uh, on your own. And there's times where I'm just adventuring with my crew, and I'll see a random group of other four players that again, this isn't a multiplayer game, but I'm like, "What the fuck is like?" Is that like somebody else? Like I feel like that's somebody else in another universe playing this game as well, adventuring with their little that's four so squad. Funny. And I might like bust out fuckers. my weapons at the wrong time, and they're like, "Yo, you want shit?" And I'm like, "No, no, no, but put the weapons away." But then you go out blessing, <laughs> and it's like I it, the best comparison that I could think of was the gameplay being so rewarding and addicting it, in the same way that I never wanted to stop playing GTA Five back in the day when you could just boot up the campaign and just fuck around for what it felt like hours. Mm. Not to the same level, granted, because having vehicles and planes and just... It, it's this physics system that makes the game so hilarious and non-repeatable because mm -hmm. I'm not getting, like, the same animations when I fall. Like, random shit is happening all of the goddamn time because of the way this physics system's, like, system operates where I, I... There's a big Torin guy who's, like, Fucking, I, I say touring guy, but I mean like a he's a bull with like human legs. Minotaur, Minotaur, Minotaur guy. Guy's fucking like twenty feet tall. Bless. We're taking mm -hmm. him down. Oh yeah, I, I fought a guy like that. I, I I jump on the on his back and he starts bucking me off. Like oh my god, my dude just flies off. Like oh yeah, but I, I did the same thing. It's so random and so much wild shit like that happens that like it always feels fresh. It's so unpredictable in how it gives you like these emergent gameplay moments, and it's totally true. I had a. <laughs> I had a moment where there was a random pawn that I hired, and, and he was kind of annoying. This guy, he has a stupid fucking hat. I was like, I can't wait to get rid of this pawn. <laughs> but whenever you hire somebody's pawn from the internet, they give their pawn, which, by the way, you can hire Rebecca Ferguson, my pawn, out there. Uh, and she has a, you can make 5,000 gold with the quest that I give her. Code you give bio. these, you give these, these, your pawn like a quest, right? So I hired a random pawn, and I was like, oh, oh <laughs> I can get 10,000 gold by killing a Cyclops. Let's go do this shit. And then I'll get rid of the stupid hat guy. The fucking cat, cat man with the stupid hat. Cat in the hat. Um, and I go out there. And, <laughs> fucking Garfield. And I go out there for this adventure. And um, there's this word about this dragon's plague, right? Everybody's worried about the dragon's plague. That if you fight a dragon, some of your NPCs might get sick. And they'll start showing signs of like not paying attention and not really falling in line with the group. And at one point, Rebecca Ferguson tells the fucking cat man, hey, because he just goes up into battle. And Rebecca Ferguson tells the cat man, y y you shouldn't be heading out in the battle like that. Y you should, like, fall in line with our directions or whatever. And he's like, oh, whatever. I'll, I'm, ju I'm just doing whatever the fuck, you know. And I was like, oh, my God. Cat man's got the disease. Cat man's got the dragon's plague. He's showing early signs. I got to go kill this cyclops. For, uh, we got to go find a cyclops so then I can then kill the man, get my money, then throw the cat man into the water. Because you can throw people into the water, Tim. A bunch of red tentacles kill you. Holy you shit. can't jump in the water. That's like, there's evil shit down there. And I'm like, gotta, gotta go look for a cyclops. And on the way for looking for a cyclops, we get kind of bombarded by a little random, you know, group of enemies. And cat man's fighting this dude and like starts sliding off the cliff and just falls into the water by himself. <laughs> <laughs> and you see the red tentacles just swallow his ass up. I was like... Well, that's Catman's dead. <laughs> like, I guess he's just fucking dead now. And I, so I had to go Catman. resummon him. And then he's like, oh, good to be back, sir. Whatever the fuck. He's like, I heard you missed me or whatever. And then I found out he never had Jagged's Plague. He's just, they, he, they chose the attitude of like straightforward where he could be a dick sometimes. I was like, oh, he was just a dick. He didn't have a Jagged's Plague. But it's just like those moments like that just feel so random. And it's, it's like just so rewarding to not just feel like you are checking out boxes you are going out to kind of have these very unique experiences and I, i'm just having so much fun with it i don't want to stop playing the damn game and then i got a fucking 
cool hood on now, like a <sighs> good hood with a spear. Well, ben Jesuit shit. Kind of like that. Shout uh, out to the Ben and Jesuit. Well, I love uh, that movie. Dude, and then you finally saw it. I finally saw it. And then I gave Rebecca Ferguson this levitate power, and she was just floating up there, just throwing lightning bolts. Like, dude, she's insane. Like, oh, and I hired Kevin over the weekend. So I made Kevin Coelho. I made Kevin Coelho. In Mike's And name. Nick Scarpino. Mm -hmm. So Mike is playing as Nick Scarpino, mm. and Kevin Coelho was the main pawn. And what happens is, like, I needed Mike to be a high enough level so that I could hire Kevin Coelho because I'm not going to hire a pawn that's underleveled. Mm -hmm. Finally, Mike kept on playing, so he got above me, and I was like, I can finally hire Kevin. And this little fucking bowling ball was just, like, the most insane warrior fighter. There's And I made him very, very short. <laughs> and there'd be big monsters, and Kevin would shield bash him, and they would just fucking fly <laughs> through the air. It was the best shit. At one point, Kevin's hanging off the Cyclops and, like, stabbing him in the asshole. Awesome. It was just, like, it was great. And then I had to say goodbye to Kevin because I outleveled him. But I hope Mike keeps playing so bring that I can then bring him back. Uh, oh, man, it's so good, bro. It's rise so good. Again. Wow. Shout out to Easter. Shout out to Easter, everybody. <laughs> in March now, I guess. He is risen. Let us know in the comments below if you're ever planning on stopping playing video games and how your adventures in Dragon's Dogma 2 are going for you. Have you got the plague? Have your pawns got the plague? I don't know. Sounds scary out there. Anyway, I love you all. This has been a fun one. Nice little discussion topic. Indeed. Always nice. But until Good. next time, keep gaming, gamers. Goodbye, gamers. Bye.